Hello and good morning friends. Welcome to CEC Edusit Live Lecture. Uh, dear friends, in yesterday's lecture, we uh, studied about fundamentals of uh, nutrition under which we discussed about uh, uh, what is food, what are the functions of food, what is RDA. Continuing from our previous lecture, today we are going to discuss about methods of cooking as well as uh, we are going to incorporate new topic that is normal and therapeutic uh, nutrition. For this, again, we have with us in our studios Dr. Nilima Asthana. She is Assistant Professor in Department of Education, Lady Irwin College, Delhi University. So, first of all, I would like to welcome our guest, Dr. Nilima Asthana. Ma'am, welcome to the ADSET Lecture. Thank and you. as we uh, try to learn uh, through you more about nutrition, I hope uh, today uh, we'll be able to learn uh, what is cooking and uh, what method should be followed for cooking. Yeah. And uh, along with, I will tell you something about uh, therapeutic nutrition also. So I will start with methods of cooking. Actually, we cannot eat everything raw. You need to cook in some way. Heat is required for that. So heat may be transferred to the food during cooking by conduct, conduction, convection, radiation, or by the energy of microwaves, electronic heat transfer. Water or steam and air or fat or combination of these are used as cooking media. Moist heat involves water and steam. Food can also be cooked by microwaves and fat is used for uh, cooking when we use uh, fat, uh, uh, oil or uh, butter in cooking. <coughs> so m m cooking methods are classified as moist heat method, dry heat method and combination methods where we use both the methods. So moist heat method includes boiling, simmering, poaching, stewing, blanching steaming and pressure cooking. Dry heat include roasting, grilling or uh, broiling, toasting, baking, sauteing, frying and barbecue. S sometimes we use both the methods and it is known as braising. These are the major cooking methods. Apart from that, traditional uh, methods are also there and people use different methods. Uh, uh, but actually the basic methods are these moist and dry heat method. A few pictures uh, of different methods like shallow fry, deep fry, boiling, steaming, poaching, etc. I will uh, discuss each, uh, each method separately now. So types of dishes that would typically be cooked using a moist cooking method are soup, sauces, stews, vegetables, fish, fruits, breads, etc sorry bread uh, is uh, cooked by dry method so soup sauces stews vegetable fresh fruit and other non vegetarian foods also first of all is boiling a very simple method everybody can say that uh, boiling we co uh, cook something in water and uh, bring the temperature at boiling point so that is basically boiling boiling is cooking food in liquid at boiling point always carried out in a pan on the top of the stove covered by a pan lid. Many different types of food can be cooked by boiling, mainly used for soups and vegetables. Usually we cover the pan and sometimes we do not cover the pan when we need to make the food free from certain elements which usually hinders our uh, digestion. Then the second method is poaching. Poaching is, poaching is cooking in a liquid or liquor when the temperature of the liquid is held at simmering point which is just below boiling. Fish or other delicate foods can be poached and the cooking uh, liquor can then be used to enhance the flavor of the sauce which will accompany it. So uh, poaching egg is also made by this method. This is the best method to, to preserve the food because we are just cooking the food in the uh, medium as well as we are using the medium also in that. Then the second is stewing or braising. Braising and stewing are very much similar. Both methods are a very long cooking process. Braising is generally carried out in the oven and stewing is generally carried out on the stove top. So difference between braising and stewing. Stewing food is normally cut into small even sized diced pieces. Braising food items can be left whole or in larger size 
as we are uh, stewing on the uh, burner and braising is done in the oven. Stewing normally takes place on the stove top covered in the liquid and braising normally takes place in the oven and does not have to be covered in liquid. Uh, so, this is the picture of stewing and uh, braising. Braising is covered and stewing is also covered, but uh, sometimes covered and sometimes uh, lid is removed and braising is done in the oven and stewing is done on the top of the uh, burner. The next method is steaming. <coughs> steaming is uh, a very useful method when we can make a very digestible kind of food and we can preserve the nutrients as well. Steaming can be used for a variety of dishes in fast and it is fast and requires very little attention during cooking. It is cooking by the steam created by water at high temperature. Children uh, like uh, these days momos a lot and that is a dish cooked by this method even idli is cooked by steaming. In that case uh, food is cooked by the effect of the steam it, it does not come uh, in the contact of the water, but uh, we can preserve the nutrients very well and the dish uh, which is cooked by this method usually very digestive. Next method is blanching. In this food substance usually a vegetable or fruit is blanched into boiling water removed after a brief timed interval and finally plunged into iced water or placed under cold running water to halt the cooking process. So, it is a fast cooking method the temperature is very high and suddenly it is uh, brought down to a very low temperature. In that case the nutrients are preserved and again the taste is preserved and it is enhanced also and digestibility is improved in this method also. Usually when uh, we make uh, soups or we make puree, we blanch tomatoes and other vegetables also while we use these vegetables for making pasta or soups or sometimes salads which, uh, which we give to the older persons. Then types of dishes that would typically be cooked using dry cooking methods are frying, frying are of two types deep frying and shallow frying, baking, roasting, microwaving, grilling and barbecue. So frying uh, shallow or deep frying any cooking method requiring the use of fat such as shallow frying and deep frying are considered dry heat methods. This is due to the fact that oil and water do not mix so while fat can take a liquid form it is the opposite of water so it is classed as dry heat method of cooking. And there are two methods shallow frying when we use very less amount of fat and uh, just we try to um, turn the dish uh, frequently and try to cook the dish from both the sides in the uh, and in shell, uh, deep frying the food is cooked deep in the uh, oil or ghee. Uh, actually both the methods are not uh, very good very healthy methods you can say because while we deep fry the uh, food so many uh, nutrients speci specifically the vitamins which are soluble in uh, fat are removed from the uh, food product those fat soluble vit vitamins are A, D, E and K and same happens when we shallow fry. If we uh, leave the um, fat in the pan then we just do not get the uh, vitamins which are uh, soluble in fat. Otherwise also these are not very good for the digestive system because uh, fat irritates the digestive system uh, and therefore shallow frying and deep frying though the foods used to be very tasty but at, at the same time uh, nutritive value uh, diminishes in these two cases. Then the next method is baking. Uh, we all love to eat baked products, cake, pastries, bread, etc. And baking is a method in which we preserve maximum nutrients. Uh, though we use fat in this method, we use uh, milk also, 
we use curd also in this method. So, baking is a dry heat method of cooking usually carried out in an oven. It is primarily used for bread, cakes, pies, pizza and other goods that are classed as bakery products, biscuits also. Baking does not require any fat but can sometimes require a little bit of steam depending on the product that you are baking and the end result that you require. So, um, we just add fat when we try to make it more tasty, the, we definitely add <coughs> fat to it. But a, a lot of nutrients could be preserved in baking because uh, we are doing the method uh, conducting this type of cooking in a closed chamber where there is uh, very min minimum chances of uh, uh, of lo loss of nutrients due to evaporation or due to dissolving in fat etc. So, it is a good method to preserve the nutrients. Next is roasting. Roasting is the slow cooking of meat, fish and vegetables uncovered and with dry heat. Roasting is suitable for large cuts of meat such as whole chickens or joints of meat. And spit roasting is an alternative method to the oven. So, these uh, and roasting uh, we used to roast um, dry fruits also and it is done on the uh, sand or sometimes we use coal it's or also. <coughs> then next method is grilling and broiling. Both are uh, quite similar, a very min minor difference is there. Grilling is the quick cooking of meat and other food products. It creates very distinctive, distinctive textures and flavors, ideal for fish, tender cuts of meat and poultry. Grilling is when the food is cooked with heat underneath and broiling is when the heat is from above. Both will have the same results and all food will need to be turned during cooking. So, you can see broiling when uh, heat is given from the top as and in grilling the heat is given uh, from below. The last method is barbecue, we all love to have barbecue uh, and we love to eat these kind of foods. So, it is very much similar to grilling, food is cooked on a grill over coals, food is generally cooked outdoor, gives a unique charcoal grilled flavor, suitable for small cuts of meats, it is versatile and fruits and vegetables are also cook, cooked through, uh, through this method and uh, it is a quick method to cook the food. Whenever you burn the fire, you can also barbecue certain foods, foods like you can barbecue potato or paneer or can have uh, both the, um, you can enjoy heat as well as you can in enjoy barbecued food. <coughs> you can see the food is being cooked by the heated coal, burnt coal. Uh, so, in this way I uh, finish with the fundamentals of food and uh, the methods of cooking. Actually methods are of cooking are, uh, we use these kind of uh, uh, concepts in other uh, aspects of nutrition also because while I discuss with you normal and therapeutic type, different types of uh, cooking method will, uh, you will be able to understand better the um, type of diet and type of cooking method which are required for the for a particular uh, disease, uh, the diet which is uh, served in some specific kind of conditions. So, uh, method of cooking uh, you will always find helpful in uh, understanding the therapeutic nutrition also. So, before starting with therapeutic nutrition, it is important for you to understand the normal diet. You can say the normal diet which we eat in our uh, day to day life, daily schedule, daily uh, menu you can say. So, diet is the sum of foods that an individual consumes and dietary habits are part of an individual's way of life in choosing what to eat. 
A healthy diet contains all the essential nutrients needed for optimum growth, tissue repair and normal functioning of the organs such as such as such a diet is called normal diet. When I talk about healthy diet contains all the essential nutrients as we discussed in our uh, previous class the nutrients, the recommended dietary allowance of those nutrients, the essential nutrients. So, uh, you must keep in mind those essential nutrients and recommended di dietary allowances to discuss or to understand the normal diet. So, a, a healthy diet which contains all the essential nutrients which are optimum for uh, growth and regulatory function of the body or uh, such diet is known as normal diet. Now why do we uh, modify the diet and that is known as therapeutic diet. So, for example, if I am ill, I am having fever, I am not able to uh, digest the normal diet which is being prepared at home. But it is not essential for me to cook separately for myself, I can modify the regular diet and that will be suitable for me. So, it is important to understand the importance of modified diet. Diet has, uh, has special importance in modern medicine activity level of various organs gets changed during illness and nutritional requirement of the body also gets changed accordingly. Hence in such particular conditions the patient requires a modified diet. The basis for planning of such modified diets that is uh, therapeutic diet should be the normal diet. So as I told you earlier normal diet should be the basis of the therapeutic diet we can bring changes in the normal diet instead of making special diet for illness. And uh, as we all know that medicine uh, works along with the diet. So it is important to have changed or modified diet to improve the or to bring the effect of the medicine on the body. So therapeutic diets are planned to maintain or restore good nutrition in the patient. Therapeutic modifications of normal diet are done with respect to consistency, frequency, foodstuffs, nutrients and methods of cooking. So these five aspects are very much important while we discuss therapeutic diet and these five aspects are consistency of food whether solid, liquid or semi-solid food, then frequency, how frequent we can give and how frequent we should give um, meals to the patient then food stuff which type of specific food stuff should be used, nutrients which nutrients need to be restricted or given in, uh, in extra quantity and which type of cooking method should be employed um, uh, should be used while making food for a patient. So it is uh, through this picture I try to show you that diet in diseases. It is shown in a form of capsule. So as we take medicine, we should think that medicine and diet both go together and diet sometimes works as medicine for a patient. Sometimes we can improve the condition of a patient through diets and that is why in each and every hospitals these days you will find a nutritionist or a dietitian who will um, suggest you, who will give you suggestions regarding your dietary um, habits and dietary uh, mannerism. A very important aspect is nutritional homeostasis. A sick person is a, like a healthy person should be maintained in nutritional homeostasis. A well planned diet providing all the specific nutrients to the body helps to achieve nutritional homeostasis in a normal healthy individual. In diseased condition, the body tissues either do not receive proper nutrients in sufficient amount or cannot utilize the available nutrients owing to faulty digestion, absorption or transportation of food elements, thus affecting the nutritional homeostasis of the sick person. The diet therefore needs to be suitably modified. It means that a uh, sick person should be able to maintain the nutritional standard of himself or herself and in that uh, for that it is important to give right kind of diet to the patient so that 
the requirement of certain nutrients if they are they are required in less amount or more amount must be maintained by the diet of the patient next is diet therapy as i told you in my previous slides uh, as we uh, give therapy through medicine we uh, try to give treatment through diet also diet therapy means the use of diet food and drink not only in the care of the sick but also in the prevention of disease and maintenance of health so uh, it doesn't mean that only when we uh, are sick we should have modified diet we should always try to maintain our health and uh, keep ourselves disease free through our diet and that is known as diet therapy diet therapy is concerned with the use of food as an agent in effective affecting recovery from illness in later slides you will come to know how this diet helps us in maintaining ourselves uh, to in maintaining health of ourselves and keeping ourselves away from diseases actually there are five general objectives of diet therapy and these must be kept in mind first is to maintain good nutritional status second is to correct nutrient deficiency to give rest to whole body or a particular organ to bring about changes in the body weight and the fifth is to adjust food intake to body's ability to metabolize nutrients during disease so first objective is to maintain good nutritional status and it should, it is the main objective of diet therapy as i said uh, earlier that we should uh, aware of our nutrient requirement and must get all those nutrients which are important in that particular case for example if a person is diabetic and uh, uh, he or she should avoid carbohydrate and that is very important if it is not restricted then the uh, condition of the patient will deteriorate, deteriorate a lot and uh, it is it will be difficult for the patient to maintain the right kind of uh, health then the second uh, objective is to correct nutrient deficiency in some cases nutrients are lost for example in very high fever the caloric requirement of the patient is increased and in that case uh, the require uh, the patient must take extra amount of calorie in uh, other diseases like in tuberculosis also extra amount of calorie and protein are required by the patient third is to give rest to whole body or a particular organ for example if a person is suffering from jaundice the liver uh, is expected to uh, take rest and in that case we avoid fat from in the diet because liver takes um, liver uh, is engaged in the digestion of fats so it is important to give rest to that particular organ and there are so many example for example if a person is suffering from hypertension or um, uh, formation of uh, cholesterol in the arteries in that case it is expected that person person should not take fat in excess of amount because fat in turns converted into uh, cholesterol in the arteries so uh, we try to give rest to the particular organ in that case then the another objective is to bring about changes in the body weight body weight is the major problem for so many different diseases for example obesity is uh, uh, obesity results in uh, so many diseases like uh, it may uh, cause diabetes it may cause hypertension it may cause um, uh, pain in <coughs> bones so uh, it is important to keep the weight of the body in exact uh, ex exactly appropriately the body weight should be appropriate according to the height and uh, metabolic rate of the body and the fifth objective is to adjust food intake to body's ability to metabolize nutrients during disease for example in certain diseases metabolism of the body uh, disturbs and in that case we should avoid those nutrients which are not uh, properly absorbed or digested so this is the uh, fifth objective of the diet therapy 
Now therapeutic adaptation of the normal diet. Uh, how can we ad adapt a normal diet in uh, disease condition? First is we can change, bring change in the consistency so as to provide a normal soft or a liquid diet. Then modifications in energy intake, high or low energy diets depending upon the metabolic changes, modification in activity patterns and the weight of a patient, suitable alteration in the energy intake are done. Third is modification in the content of one or more nutrients. For example, as I told you earlier, high or low protein diets, low sodium diets, moderate fat diet or a high carb carbohydrate diet. Other aspects are modification in the fiber con content. In, in some cases, we try to uh, restrict or give more fiber content such as high and low. Uh, diseases affecting the functioning of the gastrointestinal system generally require uh, modifications in the uh, fiber content of the diet. For example, during diarrhea we need to restrict the fiber content and during constipation we need to uh, add fiber content. Then exclusion of certain foods in allergic conditions, certain specific foods to which the individual is allergic are entirely excluded from the diet. Then increase in the frequency of feeding. In some disease conditions, the patient may not be able to eat very large amount of food at one time. It may thus become essential to give smaller meals at frequent intervals. Then method of cooking, as I told you earlier that method of cooking is very important to understand the type of diet to be provided to a person who is not keeping good health. So, such as boiling or stewing or pressure cooking are important uh, in therapeutic uh, diet preparation. Similarly, cooking by dry heat methods such as grilling, roasting and baking involves ne negligible amount of fats hence can be used in weight reducing diets. Now points to be kept in mind while modifying normal diets. So, meal, uh, meals modified should not deviate too much from the original meal. Likes of individuals should be kept in mind. Meals should look attractive and served in a pleasant manner. Because we are giving food to a patient, so it should not be deviated largely from the normal diet. As it is, the patient is not having proper meals and if we give the patient very uninteresting and um, uh, uh, not very tasty diet, diet then the patient will not have diet at all. So, it, uh, the prime purpose of diet therapy is to uh, uh, facilitate the patient to take the food. There are some mechanical alerted diet and uh, many people require a soft diet simply because they have no teeth. Such a diet is known as a mechani mechanical or dental soft diet. The diet can be made mechanically soft by cooking, washing, puring the foods used in normal diet. We can blend the food and give to the person who is having some problem related to teeth or we can uh, give boiled di uh, food just by mashing it with the help of spoon. Then certain conditions are required for the normal diet to be sufficient. For example, vegetables may be chopped or diced before cooking. Tough skins and seeds of fruits and vegetables should be removed. Tough skins will take a very long time in cooking, so it should be removed. Seeds of the food, fruit should be removed and from the vegetables also the seeds should be removed. Nuts and ripe fruits, if they are uh, required, may be used in chopped or powdered forms. Meat to be finally minced or ground, soft breads and chapatis can be given. Now I, I come over to the five uh, aspects which need to be taken care of while modifying the diet. The first is modification in consistency. A normal consistency diet is used for most of the patients in hospitals 
who are permitted to eat without any restriction in respect of the type and amount of food. Such a diet is known by various names as regular, general or full diet. However, for most acute illness, the consistency of the diet is modified to either soft or fluid depending on the tolerance of the patient. So, in so many cases, patient is allowed to have uh, normal diet. But uh, due to uh, some conditions like operation or uh, problem related to gastrointestinal tract, they can have meal, but the consistency is uh, changed of the diet. And uh, the, this diet is known as regular or general diet. There are two types of uh, diets like soft diet and liquid diet. Soft diet is used as a transitional diet as it is a dietary step between full fluid and normal diet. Nutritionally adequate diet, soft in consistency, easy to chew, made up of simple easily digested foods without any strong spices, fibers and flavors. The soft diet is planned for conditions where mechanical ease in eating or digestion or both are desired leaves a low residue after digestion and absorption, so it is easy to digest. Prescribed in, in acute infections like uh, some infection of gastrointestinal tract, uh, constipation, diarrhea, pre and post operative stages and uh, uh, example may be um, soft uh, up, uh, suji upma or bread upma or khichdi. So, uh, these are easy to digest and uh, uh, exert less pressure over the intestinal, intestinal uh, tract and thus uh, digestion is easy. Soft diet, you can see the pictures, you can, uh, we can give suji upma, we can mash the banana and it also becomes could be the um, example of soft diet. Dalia, khichdi, etc., uh, pudding. Sample menu of soft diet. Uh, in breakfast, we can give bread, slightly buttered, suji porridge, poached or boiled egg. You know about the poaching method of cooking. So, poached or boiled egg, sweet milk. Mid morning, because uh, if the frequency could be is to be increased, then we need to give uh, something between breakfast and lunch. In mid morning, fruit juice, rusk, or cake. Rusk could be hard, so we can avoid rusk if uh, it is uh, dipped in some uh, liquid like milk or something, so it is fine. Then, lunch could in include boiled rice, pulses curd and vegetables, evening tea could be tea and sweet biscuits, dinner, khichdi curd, minced meat, paneer, fruit, soft fruit any and bedtime milk. Uh, so the next is liquid diet, uh, when we talk about consistency liquid diet, uh, as I told you earlier, the soft diet is the link between liquid diet and normal diet. So, uh, when the uh, condition is little bit serious, we uh, switch over to liquid diet. It consists of foods that will pour or are liquid at room temperature. Nutritive value is definitely low because the, of the consist, uh, consistency and consequently such diets are used only for very limited periods of time. As we are using only the soup or the liquid form of the food product, the nutritive value is low. So, we should try to give for a shorter time this liquid diet. These are standard hospital diets. These uh, It includes foods in a liquid state which are strained and are free from any solid particles. Given in conditions like diarrhea, vomiting, fever, indigestion and post-operative conditions when a person cannot tolerate solid foods. There are two types of liquid diet, clear liquid and full liquid diet. Clear liquid at the, as the name suggests, uh, it is clear uh, soup or clear uh, drinks used for post-operative patients during acute illness or surgery when there is a marked intolerance to food as shown by nausea, nausea, vomiting, anorexia and diarrhea, 
nutrients have to be restricted, helps in preve preventing dehydration and maintains water and electrolyte balance. Small nutrients amounts of fluid are served at frequent intervals to replace fluids and electrolytes and also to relieve thirst. This is nutritionally inadequate and therefore used for a very short period of time. The sample menu of a liquid diet could be uh, in the breakfast clear fruit juice, tea or coffee, mid morning vegetable soup, lunch apple ju juice and fruit flavored ice. Mid afternoon carbonated soda, evening tea or coffee with very less milk, dinner clear soup and bedtime orange juice. So you can see that all the uh, menu it includes uh, mainly liquid and main uh, liquid also clear liquid. Then full liquid diet it includes foods which are liquid or liquefied at room and body temperature. These are free from cellulose and irritating condiments and spices given to acutely ill patients who are unable to chew or swallow solid foods. This diet can be properly planned and made nutritionally adequate for maintenance requirement. Diet can be used for relatively long periods as compared to a clear, clear fluid diet because we can uh, increase the nutritive value by adding some uh, foodstuffs. This diet is given in case of high fever, surgery, acute heart problem, gastritis or any other severe diseases. Sample diet menu for full liquid diet could include orange juice milk, mid morning milkshake, lunch, in lunch soup or tomato juice, mid afternoon eggnog if the patient is non-vegetarian otherwise something uh, made up of vegetable or cereals, evening coffee, tea, apple juice, in dinner time ice cream and soup, bedtime milk. So uh, this should be the full liquid diet. We can give shakes, uh, thick soups in full liquid diet. Now the next aspect of any therapeutic diet is modification of nutrients. As I told you earlier in certain cases we try to restrict nutrients and in certain cases we give them extra nutrient. So the quantity and quality of the protein, fat, carbohydrate, vitamins, water and minerals in a diet may be modified. An increase uh, is used to correct deficiency or provide extra nutrients for repair of body tissues for as I told you earlier uh, in the case of high fever we increase the uh, quantity of calories. So in that case we can give uh, good uh, juices, electrolyte, uh, electrol powder or the uh, sugar salt uh, solution to, uh, for, to supplement the loss um, of uh, minerals as well as fluid. Nutrients may be reduced in a diet because the patient can uh, metabolize only a certain amount as in the case of uh, uh, diabetes. I will discuss a few nutrients one by one. First one is calorie. High calorie diets are important for the treatment of markedly underweight patients and for patients with increased calorie requirements during fever, infections, malabsorptions, burns, hyperthyroidism and wound management. This is a normal diet with an increase in the calorie level to 3000 calories per day or more. If appetite is poor, small serving of highly reinforced foods are given and low calorie diets are prescribed for weight reductions in diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular diseases, hypertension gout, gallbladder disease and before surgery. This is a normal diet with energy values reduced to 1500 to 1000 calories per day. Then modification in protein content. High protein content diet is prescribed for conditions like fever, burns, high protein means 100 to 125 gram per day. And it is required during fever, burns, hyper, uh, fever because uh, due to rise in temperature tissues are destroyed in the body 
and for tissue repair high protein is required same is with burns then hyperthyroidism to check the functioning of the uh, gland it is uh, high protein di diet is required hemorrhages diarrhea because of the loss of nutrients due to frequent motions after surgery protein energy malnutrition nephritic syndrome which is related to kidney uh, malfunction infective hepatitis elderly adolescents pregnancy lactation and alcoholics and uh, milk and milk products eggs meat and meat products soya beans peanuts fish pulses beans are good sources of protein and could be given and in certain cases low protein diet is given so uh, either low protein or complete withdrawal of proteins necessary in conditions like acute or chronic renal failure and severe li liver disorders in severe liver disorders protein levels must be decreased or completely restricted for a few days patients with kidney disease require low protein diet since the kidney cannot excrete nitrogenous waste such diets contain 18 to 20 g 22 g of high biological value proteins per day so you can see uh, at times we give 100 to 125 g per day and at times we give only 18 to 25 22 g of protein per day now the modification in fat content so in the same way high fat diets are given during severe undernutrition when calorie re requirement is too high we must give high fat diets and food products include whole milk cream butter egg yolk pure ghee cheese fried fruit nuts etc are very good in fat content it must be given fat control diets regulate the amount and type of fat allowed the calories from fat should provide about 30% of the total calories with 10% from saturated fats and 12 to 14% from polyunsaturated fats intake of cholesterol is reduced from the average daily intake of 600 to 300 mg fat control diets are, are prescribed for gallbladder diseases cardiovascular diseases liver diseases and obesity so this is the modification of fat then modification in carbohydrate content as we all know that carbohydrate is the major source of energy in our diet and uh, it constitutes the bulk of most diet 60 to 90 percent of the total diet high carbohydrate diet is prescribed in various diseases of the liver and in pre operative conditions as adequate glycogen storage is of considerable value is required vegetarian foods have an abundance of carbohydrate example cereals such as wheat rice raga jowar maize and its products like bread biscuits and roots and fibers restricted carbohydrate diet is essential in the treatment of diabetes mellitus so as uh, liver uh, where liver is uh, functioning uh, not very well in that case high carbohydrate diet is given because it is easier to digest and liver does not uh, take part in the digestion of carbohydrate and in that case it is suitable to provide good amount of energy to the patient through carbohydrate now modification in fiber content dietary fiber plays a significant role in facilitating peristaltic movements to prevent constipation and in evacuating waste from the body peristaltic movement is the movement in the intestine and it should uh, be maintained for the proper uh, motion every day and for that high fiber diet is very much important high fiber diet is a normal diet with fiber increase to 15 to 20 grams daily foods which can be included in the diet are plenty of long fibered vegetables vegetables with skins fruits with skins salads whole pulses and whole cereal grains along with by fiber the person should drink plenty of water because water uh, uh, fiber absorbs the water and 
helps to soften stools otherwise if fiber is there and water is not there it will lead to constipation. Low fiber diets are essential in the treatment of several gastrointestinal disorders such as peptic ulcer, diarrhea, dysentery. These diets eliminate or limit foods high in bulk or fiber and in this case if uh, diet contains high amount of fiber it will further irritate the intestinal tract. Modification in mineral diet, uh, mineral content, basically we talk about sodium, calcium, iron, these play major role. Sodium restriction 250 to uh, uh, 250, 500, 1000, 2400 to 4500 milligrams per day. The first diet is a severe restriction that excludes salty food and salt in cooking at the table. This diet is used both to, both to prevent prevent and treat edema therefore it is prescribed for congestive heart failure hypertension liver and renal, renal disease avoid or limit use of smoked meats of fish or fish processed foods pickles olives and processed cheese because these processing uh, need, uh, use a lot of salt Potassium and phosphorus restriction for, uh, are recommended for renal patients, R means the patients who are having problem related to kidney. Uh, guidelines for reduction could be uh, avoiding milk, yogurt and ice cream. Use non-dietary cream substitutes, exclude dried peas and beans, omit cola beverages, use meat, poultry, fish only in amounts compatible with high biological value protein intake. High biological protein intake uh, means the protein should have a maximum amount, all the uh, essential amino acids should be present in that protein and high biological protein is obtained from uh, animal sources like milk and milk products as well as non-vegetarian food products. Then high di calcium diet is essential for the treatment of rickets and uh, osteomalacia related to bones and during lactation period also. High iron diets are essential for adolescent girls as menstrual cycle begins. In pregnancy also high iron is required due to increase in blood volume and fall in hem hemoglobin levels. Uh, I think I should uh, stop here because um, these are the, uh, the food allergies are there but we can discuss it tomorrow. Uh, high iron diets are required for adolescent girls as menstrual cycle begins means that they uh, lost blood and along with blood they uh, lost iron also and in that case as it is a cycle they need the blood, uh, the need iron regularly. So high iron diet is very much essential for adolescent girls as well as during pregnancy and during lactation also because uh, mother is feeding at the time of lactation and uh, feeding the fetus at the time of pregnancy also. So then uh, she needs high iron diet during pregnancy. Definitely, ma'am. Uh, continuing from uh, this lecture, that is uh, from tomorrow. That is, uh, we are leaving this lecture here. But I have certain questions. Um, as you said, that at certain stage, uh, one requires to have uh, special uh, nutrients. Like as you said, the girls need to have uh, iron from the initial stages because um, it helps a lot uh, in the cyclic processes. Uh, now the question arises: uh, Does at every stage of life uh, one needs to have special nutrients? And if yes, what are yeah, they? Yeah, every stage of life they need special nutrients, but for example, when the child uh, comes in this world, uh, the growth is very fast and in that case the child requires a lot of protein, a lot of calorie but it should be given according to the uh, weight of the child. And uh, if you see the ICMR table you will find for infants it is given per kg weight and uh, uh, towards the later stages it is fixed. So uh, in the early stages the child requires a lot of protein and as I said uh, during adolescence uh, girls need a lot of iron as well as boys require a lot of iron because of the height and weight. As I told, uh, discussed in my previous lecture, it depends on the surface area also. Mm -hmm. So if surface area increases 
the nutrient requirement nutrients requirement also increases in that case they need um, more protein more iron more calcium uh, likewise that uh, during uh, if somebody uh, um, uh, get prone to some accidents and uh, uh, the bones get highly fractured yeah. it is preferred that one should be given yeah. calcium yeah it is true and it depends on the age fa it uh, age factors also matters a lot because if a child uh, has fracture then it is uh, very easy to for, uh, it is easily healed but if a uh, if an older person has fracture then mm -hmm. it, it takes a lot of time because the formation of bone is slower during later peri period of life as well as the um, condition called as osteoporosis that mm -hmm. starts in the later stage of life when the deposition of calcium uh, becomes very slow sometimes negligible due to certain uh, uh, related factors like certain hormones are required mm -hmm. for example after uh, this uh, menopause the uh, women become very prone to these mm -hmm. fractures because that is a very important hormone is missing for the growth and uh, st strength of the bone uh, this we can include in the normal nutrition that is uh, if we talk about the all the cyclic processes as you said about yeah, the it women. it could be in the normal uh, nutrition but if the uh, deficiency is so high then naturally uh, norm, obviously the therapeutic nutrition is required for the patient because if the um, deficiency is so high the child or the person is not able to digest or not able to Mm, uh, take free uh, meal, uh, good meal at a time. Then naturally, you need to give frequent meals with high uh, specific mm. nutrient. Uh, sometimes it is also seen that uh, uh, we are suffering from certain kind of diseases, and in spite of uh, having medicines, after some time we discover that uh, our disease yeah. has been healed up. Uh, can we say that uh, at that time we must be taking some nutrients uh, which helped in uh, wear and tear of the body? Yeah, actually for that it is important to take vitamin B complex because these vitamins prevent so many diseases to take place. For example, a simple uh, one is rickets or beriberi which are uh, due to some vitamin B complex and if the deficiency is there then naturally the bone uh, will, bones will be weak of the child. Uh, with this note, we would uh, prefer that everybody of us would uh, to take care of uh, the essential in, uh, nutrients which are required by the body. And ma'am, as you delivered through the lecture that uh, why uh, nutrients are very important to the body, uh, we will be continuing our lecture tomorrow also and we will try to understand more about the uh, nutrition as well as uh, nutrients. Thank you ma'am. Thank you so Thanks very much so for much. being with us.